Hello everyone. Uh, my talk's about the ideas that have been floated for implementation in the Pac-Man package manager. Uh, as a disclaimer, many of these ideas might never happen. They're just ideas and may not actually be suitable for implementation or they just might never get anyone actually interested in writing the code that's needed to implement them. So the first bit I'm going to talk about is parallel downloads. So this is already pretty much implemented, so it will be a major feature for um, the upcoming 6.0 release, uh, which we hope to get out in the next few months, at least a beta release. So what this does is it downloads all the databases and the packages for updates in parallel. So this improves downloads times quite a lot for those who cannot max their connection either due to not having a close local mirror or having a local mirror that's not particularly fast. Um, at the moment, we do download all the packages from a single mirror because we'd run into a lot of mirror sync issues otherwise. Uh, this may or may not be improved in the future. And another thing we also do is download all signature files in the background. So you're not only downloading the package, but also its PGP signature as well. That means in, in your cache, you can verify the packages manually at any time. This is all controlled with a single configuration option. So we've got parallel downloads equals 10. I think the default will set is about five. Um, you can set it to one to turn off parallel downloads. So here goes an example of me updating my system using the latest Pac-Man from the Git branch. So as you can see, all the databases downloaded in parallel there. It was pretty quick. I maybe haven't updated my system for quite some time. And you can see all the packages downloading in parallel. So as I said in the background here, we're also downloading um, all the package signature files as well. And you can see it works along quite smoothly. So for me, this is quite a speed improvement because I use a mirror that I don't have the fastest connection to and still had plenty of um, bandwidth left. Another idea we've started planning out is an alternative system. So these sorts of things are fairly common in other package managers. Um, I think Debian and Fedora have sort of alternatives. But the basic idea is we currently have a user bin sh symlink um, and that points at bash, but people have often requested using a different shell for, for sh, um, with dash being suggested commonly because it's a nice small um, shell with not many dependencies and pretty robust. Now doing this in Arch Linux is currently not possible without rebuilding the bash package to remove the symlink first. And so the idea is to be able to change where that symlink points but still manage it with your package manager so it doesn't change over updates. Uh, there's a wiki page there with a bit of details on the implementation ideas at the moment. So here goes a basic overview of how we'd implement it. So in the package build, we'd let it know that we've got an alternative for this package. So we, this alternative continuing with the bash example would be sh. And then there'd be a file called sh.alternative or something like that, where we say we want user bin sh to be a symlink to bash. So the current sort of style of implementation is we can use full or relative paths there, and we can provide multiple files that are to be symlinked. So for example, in Python, for some unknown reason, you might want it to point at Python 2. But we might, if we do that, we might also want to use things like uh, the idle to point at idle2 and not the Python 3 version. And there's many other things Python 2 related. We might all want to change some links at once. So sort of prototyping what the Pac-Man output could look like. So here we've got uh, Pac-Man listing all the available alternatives on the system. So we have Python as an alternative and SH. So Python here could be pointed to Python 3 or Python 2. 
And currently on my system, Python 3 is the active user bin Python as all should be. Um, SH could be provided by bash or dash, and I currently would have it active with dash there. So we might want to change that, say move the sh symlink back to being the bash package. And so I'd say pacman minus alternatives update, change sh to bash, and then it tells me the user bin sh symlink now points to bash, as expected. So that's, that's still in the planning phases, but um, getting a pretty complete plan for how that will be implemented. We have a few ideas for how make package could be improved um, to make the packaging process easier. First one is improved package splitting or an alternative approach to package splitting. So when the original package splitting was implemented, it was very much focused around how KDE was getting split up into multiple packages. Now KDE was quite nice that in, in that despite building many pieces of software from a single source tarball. There was install commands for each individual piece of software. So when we split the package, you could just go install this split package, install this split package, and it would be nicely managed. Now other packages aren't quite so nice. So if you look at a GCC package build, it takes quite a bit to get the files into each of the split packages. So this is an idea where we have our split package. We'd have a function that stores, um, installs all the files in some temporary location, and then each split package would have a list of files that are to be moved from that temporary location into the, into the package. So here we've got foo, which has the binary and the include files, and a docs package, which includes the docs for foo. Another idea is improved user group handling. Uh, this probably goes beyond make package and into how groups are handled within package files. Um, so quite a few packages require that we have certain users or groups to be created before the build process. Um, sometimes this is not an issue because the groups are already available. Sometimes the groups have to be created. And other times we just use a number uh, the group ID number rather than the group uh, name to handle this. So here, for example, building the cups package, we have some files or directories in that package that are owned by the group cups. So we might say we want the package group cups to be created before we build the package. Uh, automatic dependencies. So we currently have some sort of automatic dependencies and provisions in libdepends and libdeprovides. Um, and so they automatically, they look for libraries in the depends or the provides array and automatically add versions to those libraries. Um, that That's useful, but is a bit limited and there's possibility of extending this to include a range of dependencies and provides packages automatically. Now if we look at Alpine packages, which are fairly similar to the packages created by Pacman, they have a section of automatic um, de dependencies or provides added. So for example, if we look at libjpg turbo, um, it might provide a command being cjpg also has a SO, so a library of libjpg um, version 8 and a package config file. And then you could just depend on this SO library or automatically depend on this SO library and things would go well. Uh, I note that these sorts of provides and depends would work well for repo packages, but not so well with packages you've built yourself and installed for example, from the AUR, because that results in lots of having to ignore some of these dependencies during upgrades before you can rebuild the package. So we'd need to be able to turn that on and off depending on where the package came from. Another part of make package we'd like to extend a bit is uh, the extensibility of make package. 
So currently make package has been started to be split into smaller files known as libmake package. Uh, there's been a decent amount of progress on, made on that but there's a lot more to do. Uh, so for example we can extend parts of make package so source code downloading and extraction. It's very easy to add a new VCS system there so we currently support git, mercurial and SVN I think and if we wanted to add a new VCS system it's a matter of dropping in a single file. Uh, we have things that m manipulate package options such as re we remove libtool files by default um, we could remove uh, we remove empty directories and things like that and we could add additional options for how we want our package to look here and then we've got a bunch of linting checks for both the package build and the package which just check things are looking like they should do so for the package build we check that things like arrays are arrays that um, you have the right functions in the package build and all the variables are defined. For the package we can check that it doesn't have files where it shouldn't have files etc. Doing things very similar to NAMCAP does. And in fact uh, I've got a proof of principle called package lint which is a drop-in replacement for NAMCAP but it goes into make package itself. So that has some advantages in that checks can be done in make package when we know where all the files are sitting and all the packaging variables so it gives us a slight bit more power. Um, this package lint is a bit uh, early stages at the moment it only replaces a handful of name cap rules and probably won't go a hell of a lot further unless other people contribute. Uh, we've got ideas around improving the repository databases so as I mentioned with parallel downloads that uh, the PGP signatures for all packages are now downloaded alongside the files so we could actually remove those from the database. Now initially when we added them to the database everyone was using RSA 1024 keys and you know it didn't, they didn't take up a lot of space for signatures but as people's moved up to you know 4096 or whatever um, more secure GPG hashes um, the repo databases actually become overloaded with signature files uh, so that's that's one step we could take is removing those from repo databases and then everybody's download to check for updates would be far smaller another thing we're looking at is adding a timestamp to repo databases so this is very useful because we could say after two weeks this repo database is no longer valid. Uh, why is that useful is because there's an interesting attack on package managers that a mirror could hold back updates for a package that is has a big security vulnerability and ensure everyone using that mirror still um, has the out-of-date and vulnerable package. Now if databases were assigned uh, the only way to do that would be to actually hold the entire database back um, instead of just holding the one package and after two weeks of no updates um, if that was the expiry time we get told our database is no longer valid it would flag something's gone wrong to us and we could uh, investigate. Uh, so we have a tool for managing uh, repositories called Repo Add. Um, it's it's an okay tool, but it isn't. It's it's was written quite some time ago and isn't very extensible. Um, so it also duplicates a lot of. Uh, what we do in libvapor lpm already because it takes a package reads the information of that package from the um, file inside it and then adds it all to the repository database so it's already something we do in libvalpm is reading the package information we already write a database in libvalpm being the local package database so we could really replace repo add with something in 
and the Pac-Man library itself. Now, we'd need to spend a bit of time thinking about how best to manage repos. Um, at the moment, we just add and remove packages. Uh, there's been some experimental tools uh, built for managing repositories that do slightly different approaches, which may be better. Uh, the one thing that rewriting this would do would make extending repo add quite easy and we could start doing things like creating a source package database. So at the moment we can create source packages with make package, uh, make package source and it would include the package build and any other local files needed to build the package. Now we could distribute those for people to download. It's essentially what things like the AUR do is get those tarballs, but they do it more in a git way. But we could provide links to download these source packages in the repo database. Now there's a lot of questions like, do we want to include that in the main database or a separate database, sort of like we do for file listings? And other ones like, are we just providing access to download the source package so someone could adjust it and, and build it as they wanted or we're going to manage some sort of combined source binary update that seems like quite a big project and probably not suited to Pac-Man itself but there used to be a wrapper around Pac-Man that would do this and it would also automatically modify package builds according to a patch file you had so you could have it automatically remove a dependency you didn't want in there or apply a patch that you needed. Now we could also look at multi-threading support. So in Pac-Man there's some options that are very, operations that are very, very parallel. For example, um, checking signatures and checksums, we do one package at a time. Uh, even getting all file lists out of packages. Um, Installing packages is done one at a time, but that's a lot more difficult to parallelize. Uh, but we could split this over multiple cores for some speed improvement there. I think the initial patches for that have been floating around for a while, but it's never been polished off. Uh, improving op depends. So currently we only use them for informational purposes, but when they were first proposed, there was a lot of suggestions that we could have options to install all opt-depends automatically or query the user where they wanted to install each new opt-depend rather than just displaying it. Um, things like that could get quite intrusive in the upgrade so would need to be an opt-in sort of thing but there's probably more we could do there to improve um, how we use optional dependencies. Universal transactions. So the idea is to be able to, in a single operation, install and remove packages. Now this has been requested in the bug tracker since 2007, but no one's really done a lot of work on it. And I assume it would be very useful for graphical front-ends, because you've got your graphical front-end, you click, I want to install these bunch of packages, I want to remove another bunch of packages, and click go. Um, at the moment, I assume they achieve this by first doing the installs and then doing the removes as needed. Um, but we don't have a lot of people uh, contributing that have worked on graphical front ends, so I don't know if this is a major issue. But this is something that I think we can definitely improve. So the question is, when will these features arrive? And the answer, as I said, is when someone implements them, or maybe never. These are just ideas, they might not be the best ideas. Uh, some of the things I have discussed are, are well on their way, so parallel downloads are complete to some extent. I've got a bit of polishing to be done before release, but, but it's already going well at the moment. Um, alternatives and repo timestamps both have had uh, initial patches posted, uh, but got a lot of work left to do then. And uh, we will be switching to using Arch's GitLab instance for um, development of Pac-Man when that's nice and ready to go. So I'm told this is going to re result in an inundation of new contributors 
as it's going to be a lot easier to contribute. But as I always uh, tell people, taking one of these ideas and running with it's all good, but do make sure you talk to people before you do, because there's no point spending a lot of work on a feature that may never land into the Pac-Man codebase. And with that, I'll thank you. And let me know if you've got any other ideas that would be interesting.